Scientists are becoming increasingly concerned about the advance of invasive species around the world. They say non-native plants and animals are causing billions of dollars worth of damage every year. An international panel now wants governments in both rich and developing countries to take action. DW's Shola Lawal reports from India. Green, pretty, abundant. Water hyacinths spread out for miles, covering stretches of fresh water in a West Bengali village. Samarendra Nath Dikada's job is to weed them all. The problem is the water hyacinth has rotted in many places. I have been working here for six to seven years now. The job becomes more difficult in monsoons. Collecting these weeds earns Samarendra a living, but they're a big problem for other plants and organisms. They grow profusely, and as a result, when they are growing, they hamper or reduce or kill the native biodiversity. Originally from Brazil, water hyacinths were introduced to India in the 1800s. Now, with no natural enemies here, they've invaded hundreds of thousands of water bodies. They are just one of an estimated 3,500 known invasive species causing problems around the world. They spread through transport systems, are used to control other species, or increasingly are moving into new territories due to climate change. These plants, animals, and other living organisms are responsible for 16% of animal and plant extinctions, according to a new report released this week. It found that invasive species cost countries more than $400 billion yearly. Almost all of that are from losses. The report says countries are not doing enough to prevent and contain the intruders. Places like Europe and Australia are already pretty far advanced in that already. Um, I guess it's really sort of shifting a lot of that capacity to uh, countries that aren't quite as well off. Imagine a landlocked country in Southeast Asia, for example. They don't have a lot of capacity to control what's coming across the borders. The more we share this capacity around and the more knowledge we generate, everyone's going to benefit. The Americas are one of the most impacted regions as is Asia-Pacific, where countries like India are seeing some of the biggest impacts, according to the researchers. In West Bengal, communities have stopped trying to control the invasive water hyacinth, and savvy entrepreneurs are instead mixing the dried weed with cotton for making saris. But the goal, some say, is to eliminate intruders like water hyacinths for good. And now let's dig a bit deeper into this with Laura Myerson. She's from the University of Rhode Island and is a coordinating lead author of that report. Uh, that report. Laura, in our report uh, featured uh, water hyacinth as an example of destructive invasive species. If authorities don't get it under control, what's the worst damage that species, for example, could do? It impacts local people, it impacts fisheries, um, people's livelihoods. They People that rely on, on local fisheries to eat their everyday meals and to sell fish and other products in markets. So it really can impact people immediately and dramatically and cause extreme poverty. Now let's go through the reasons given for the spread of invasive species. One that they are um, is that they are spread through transport systems. Is that the most Im important one? They're all important, but uh, transport is, of course, a main way. We move so many goods around the world on a daily basis. It's just, if you look at a map of, of boat crossings and airline crossings, it's like a whole web is spun um, every single day. And we're just moving things around at an unprecedented rate. We can't keep up with it. And it, it really is quite difficult. Can you give us an example of a, a species that has spread through the transport system? Oh, there, there are so many. If you simply look at uh, ballast water and biofouling, you know, the things that cling to the bottom of boats, for example, many species have been transported um, from the Black Sea and across various oceans into the Great Lakes. And a good example is the zebra mussel. The zebra mussel has colonized the Great Lakes. It's driven um, native mussels and clams uh, near extinction. And it's also, you know, a hazard to people when they walk into the water to swim they cut their feet. Um, it also has the unfortunate um, um, habit of clogging water intake pipes for um, energy plants, which can be quite dangerous. Mm. Now, we also know that the deliberate introduction of certain species has, uh, um, has spectacularly backfires. 
Uh, does this still happen? And can you give us an example? Biocontrol, I think you're speaking of biocontrol, classical biological control. It's gotten to be much better. Um, I think that research is better and um, people are more careful with it now. However, there are introductions, things that seem to be benign that, in fact, um, escape anyway. And, and that's happened with um, you know, many, many species. The cane toad is a, a spectacular example in Australia. Um, it was introduced for biological control. Um, another species in Europe might be the American mink, which was introduced to produce furs. Um, but you know, as you know, it's a voracious predator, and it will eat anything basically it can get its, its jaws on. And that's been a real disaster for Europe. Now, you're also highlighting climate change as a cause of species moving into new territories, probably because the old ones become uh, inhabitable uh, for them. How widespread is this problem already? And uh, can you give us an example for that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, climate change is one of the major drivers of um, invasive alien species. And, you know, all species are beginning to move poleward away from the equator to cooler regions as our climate warms. And so now many species are, are moving northward. So we're experiencing, um, you know, mangroves moving northward into, into salt marshes, um, other species moving um, into um, colder waters, you know, into the Arctic that are unable to, wouldn't have been able to survive there previously when waters were so cold. So it's, it's creating new habitats and new opportunities for many species that are able to disperse easily, colonize easily, and then reproduce rapidly. Laura Meyerson there, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you so much.